Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name, glory to your name. Why don't you bless the name of the Lord? Bless him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, one accord, singing, Blessed be the name, Blessed be the name, oh, Blessed be the name. Can you worship that name again? Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and Blessed be his blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Father. Father, we thank you because indeed there is none like you. We thank you because indeed you are our Father. You reign forevermore. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. If not because of you, we will be nowhere. In your mercy, you kept us. Your word says, your mercies are renewed every morning. Great is your faithfulness. If the law was not on our side, we would have been consumed. Thank you for not making us victims of accidents. Thank you for not making us victims of floods. Thank you for not making us victims of fire incidents. 
Thank you for not making us victims of kidnap. Thank you for not making us victims of bandit attacks. It is not because we prayed, but your mercy kept us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for daily loading us with benefits. Thank you for supplying every of our needs. Thank you for giving us a reason to rejoice. Thank you because what the enemy thought would cost tears in our lives, you turn it around for good. Thank you for putting the enemies to shame. Thank you for not letting the enemy rejoice over our soul. Thank you for frustrating the tokens of the liars. Thank you for delivering us from the captivity of the enemy. Thank you for our parents, our loved ones, our families, those connected to us. Thank you for the members of House of Grace Assembly. Thank you for your mercy. We give you all the praise. Lord, this morning we ask that you would speak to us by yourself. We ask that you open up our eyes to behold glorious things from your wonders, full law. The Bible says, for the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. You will cause there to be a conversion. There will be a redemption of our souls. We ask, Lord, that you will teach us your wisdom. And you will help us to walk in your wisdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Can you greet your neighbor? Welcome to church. Oh, can you ask that neighbor if it is cold? Please, could you give me small volume? My voice is on the low. <laughs> Welcome to church. We have... We have plenty of scriptures to read this morning. Act of Apostles, chapter 11, verse 26. That's our first scripture. Out of Apostles, chapter 11, 26. Okay, because we have many scriptures to read, I think maybe people in church, let's divide the scriptures. Someone read at 11, 26. Okay, it's projected. Another person, 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Something is humming. Uh, 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 to 9. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 to 9. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 4 to 11. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 4 to 11. That's, I would prefer that in the Passion's translation for Proverbs. I would prefer that in Passion's translation. And Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6 to 8. But I think let's begin with... Out of Apostles 11.26 and 1 Timothy 4.12. So we have a lot of scriptures to read this morning. Now, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled together with the church and thought much people. And the disciples were called first, were called Christians first in Antioch. Right? How many people still remember their, what's that thing called? Bible story quiz we used to do, right? They will ask you where were the believers first referred to as Christians, right? And we'll say, in Antioch. Praise the living Jesus. Now, First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, conversation, 
charity, spirit, faith, and purity. Can we have this translation in the Amplified? I want to say something in the Amplified for this particular scripture. Do we have the Amplified? Or somebody with the Amplified in church can read for us. Okay, yeah. All right, it's up. It says, let no man despise that youth. Okay. Ah, okay. Let no man despise or think less of you because of your youth. But be an example pattern for the believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Now, according to this scripture, the believer is known or should be known after five order. What are the five orders? Speech, right? Conduct, love, faith, and purity. Can we say that again? Speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity, right? The King James Version puts that speech as words. Conversation, conduct, it puts it as conversation, but it maintained the law, faith, and um, purity. All right, the Christian conduct. This is a very extensive subject matter that I thought was something we could just gloss over, but I was shocked because it took me. if not more than four hours researching and preparing the sermon. Four hours. And um, it's a topic that we can't even finish in one day. It's a topic we can't finish in one day. At some point I was thinking that um, probably would have made the service just one service. I would call it a teaching service. And you come, you meet us, expecting that they are in praise and worship mode. But rather than praise and worship mode, you come in into an atmosphere of teaching. And when we are done with everything, and we have received the word, then we can now dance and go home and share the grace. <laughs> you know, uh, we sometimes we understand the church order of program. So we know when the pastor will preach. We know when the choir will sing. We know when they will say prayer. So sometimes we can position ourselves to come when it is the time for prayer or time for singing. So, Today, we might just, I don't know, we might just, so prepare your mind for a journey. Tell your neighbor, prepare your mind for a journey. And it's not a service that you come and you don't have biro and paper. <laughs> it's not a service you come. You can't retain information in your brain. I saw a picture of Daddy Gio, Bishop Oyedepo, Francis Wale Oke in a particular meeting. And they were jotting. And I began to ask myself, what were these guys jotting? But you know what? It tells you that even if you know the subject, nobody is a compendium of wisdom. So, it's a teaching service today. I wrote here, the teacher of today's meeting is the Holy Spirit. Even in my notes, you have Holy Spirit there. Who is the teacher? So, you are not listening to Pastor Benga. You are listening to what? Holy Spirit. 
Tell your neighbor, I am listening to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, carry me on. Carry me on. Ah, you don't want the Holy Spirit to carry you. Okay. We'll be looking at this in three headlines. Three headlines. Number one is the identification of the believer. The first headline is the identification of a believer. The second outline is the believer has a Christian. The believer has a Christian. Then the th third outline is believer, the believer or Christian conduct. Then the last thing would be Think on this. Yeah. Uh, you know, how many people read the only open heavens, maybe yesterday or today, you would see that one of the scriptures we mentioned has been a subject that Daddy Jew has been talking about for since Friday, and it's going to continue till about Tuesday or Wednesday. Tuesday, right? What's the scripture? What's that scripture? All right. Okay. Yeah. Whatsoever things are. Right? Yeah. Which is one of the scriptures where, you know, we have as our text, Philippians chapter 4. So, God has spoken once, twice we've heard. So, it means that God actually wants us to listen and to learn valuable information that would bring about great redemption. For our souls. So the identification of a believer. So I told you the subject is Christian conduct. And so in Christian conduct, we have in brackets discipline, honor, service, giving, and lifestyle. You would agree with me that the subject of discipline is a one day curriculum. The subject of honor is a one-day curriculum. The subject of service is a one-day curriculum. The subject of giving is a one-day curriculum. The subject of lifestyle is a one-day curriculum. While I was preparing this, and you know, and, and God began to drop a thought, probably we should even have a teaching meeting one day in this July. Maybe a Saturday. We just come to church. Six hours in the world. Only. Yeah. We are used to six hours of prayer. And you know, sometimes when we are doing that six hours of prayer, it's God give me husband. God give me job. God give me wife. God give me money. But when you come for that six hours, whereas if they call six hours of God, please send me to Zamfara. For the gospel. Some of us will not show. I was sharing something with my wife yesterday. I saw somebody, they put three hours prayer for Nigeria. 300 hours. I showed my wife. She said, Ha! Ah. It means Nigeria matter, don't cast me that though. 300 hours. 300, as in eight hours, we are struggling. So 300. Uh, that's like 300 divided by 24 is what? Eh? 12. Eh? 15. 12.5. So that's for 12 and a half days praying for Nigeria. Ah, God was here. Ah, God was here. You know, the flooding that happened yesterday, I began to ask. Is it that there was a memo that was sent that the end of the world is about to come? You know? The flooding was, was something else yesterday. So God indeed must have mercy on this country. And I, I, I did something yesterday. I, 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 I did a search on, on, on Google. And I said, flooding in Lagos today. 
And you'll be shocked that Goku brought out results of flooding in Lagos, the history. And every time the flooding happens in a particular date window, you can go and do that search. June 19, July 8, July 12, as in, it's within the range of June, middle June to middle July. You can just try it, do a search, flooding in Lagos, and go to video. So it means that it is consistent. And you know, you would see the, the, the what's that time, the, that thing they call timestamp, right? You see the date there. 2021, it was around that same window. 2020, 2019, 2018. Then it means that it's not that this flooding just began. So it's something that is, it's like you can predict the time it will occur. So what do you do? You plan towards it. In developed countries, they know when a tycoon is coming or an hurricane is coming. They know where the direction of the hurricane will pass. They know what the things to do. Even before those things happen, they give them name. They give them, why is it that it's only female names they give them? Katrina, Alice, Grace. Oh, is the person that discovered that they're always naming after? So why is it only women that is always discovering the hurricane? I don't want to go somewhere. I want to say women like finding trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It is well. So the identification of a believer. Who is the believer to start with? Who is the believer? Is the believer different from a Christian? Or is the believer the same as a Christian? Who is a believer? I have some points for you to just note who a believer is. Number one, a believer or the believer is one who has come to terms with the sacrifice for sin paid on the cross and accepted the gift of redemption by the blood of Jesus. He has come to terms with the sacrifice for sin paid on the cross and redemption by the blood of of Jesus. What does that mean? It's come to the point of realization that, okay, yes, the price for my sin has been paid on the cross. And the price was the blood. So the price was the blood. The blood. What kind of blood? The blood of Jesus. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Romans chapter 4 verse 25 says, And Jesus was delivered up for your offenses, for my offenses, and he was raised up for our justification. He was delivered for our offenses, meaning that all had sinned and come short of God's glory. Meaning that man in himself was a deficient before God. I was deficient before God. What does it mean to be deficient? To be deficient means you are lacking an essential nutrient. So man before God was deficient. Man could not stand before God in his own right. Man could not stand before God in his own capacity. Why? Because man had fallen short of God's glory. He says, for all have sinned and what? And come short. Romans 3, 23. All have sinned. So when he says all have sinned, there is no exemption. All that sinned were all that came from the offshoots of Adam. 
So all have sinned and come short of God's glory. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Romans chapter 5 verse 9. It says we've been justified by his blood. We have been justified by his blood and we have been saved from his wrath. You know what that means? It means that because of sin, the... What's that word? Because of sin, the consequence of sin was wrath. God's judgment. The consequence of sin was what? Was wrath. Any man that sins. You know, if you check the Old Testament, when people committed some little atrocities, for example, look at the case of Achan, when they were to go fight a small country, and um, Achan decided to, you know, he kept some things which shouldn't have been kept. And the children of Israel suffered defeat. And, you know, that act was exposed. The scripture told us that the punishment that was you know, the punishment for that um, act was death. They stoned Achan and they stoned his entire family to death. Praise the living Jesus. Or do you want to talk about um, Saul, King Saul? King Saul went to go fight a battle. The Bible told us that when they were done, the instruction was do not keep anything, kill everything. But you know, he had a good intention. He had a good intention. And the intention was that he was going to bring some. And that was because some people had suggested to him, because you know, when Samuel came, Saul said, I feared for the people. So it was not, so it was not even Saul. It was not his intention to even go away with those things. But the Bible says he feared for the people. And so, you know, they suggested to him, let's move some things along with us. And they moved those things along with them. And Samuel came. And Samuel said, have you, you know, have you done all that I said you should do? Ah, yes. That's for Samuel chapter 15. Yes, I've done everything you told me to do. And Samuel said, but what is that that I hear at the background? And he said, oh, I see. It is the voice of the sheep that we kept to sacrifice unto God. And he says, does God desire sacrifices? To obey is what? It's better than sacrifice. To ask him. And God rejected Saul. Because any time we sin or any time we walk out of God's counsel, what happens is that there is an automatic disqualification. So what Jesus did was that rather man, because man had been disqualified, man could not go into God's presence without needing something to aid him. And that's why every time he would appear before God's presence, there needed to be an atonement of blood. What does it mean to atone with blood? To atone with blood means to cover. To atone means to cover. So they will spill the blood. So when God sees them, when they appear before him every year, what God is seeing is seeing the blood of an innocent animal that was killed in their place. So what God is seeing is he sees the blood that was applied. That was, that was applied. And the blood signifies life. The life of a thing is in its blood. Praise the living Jesus. Tell your neighbor the life of a thing is in its blood. I can't hear you. Yep. So God decided to use that same blood to restore us back, to reconcile us back. So the believer is one who has come to terms with the reality that number one, the price or the sacrifice has been paid. And that that price was by the blood of Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 also establishes that fact. It says because of our sin we were far away from God. It says but by his blood he has brought us near. He has brought us into close proximity. So we can access 
the throne room of God. We are not strangers to God any longer. You know, Ephesians 2.14 says, we are no longer strangers. We are not aliens. He has made us partakers of the common wealth. And in 16, he has broken the middle wall of partition. How did he establish this? By the blood. Tell your neighbor, by the blood. Say, by the blood. Ephesians 1 7 says, Ephesians 1 7 says that your redemption is by that blood and your sins have been forgiven according to the riches of his grace. The riches of his grace. You have redemption. What does it mean to be redeemed? To be redeemed means to be, you know, you know, you know, um, how many of us, you know, when we're younger, you know, I like to gather Coke bottle. Um, um, what's that thing called? Um, cork. I mean, uh, what's the name? Can Canter. We call it Canters, right? But it's not Canters. What's the name of that thing? Crown Cork. Okay. That's the name of it. Crown Cork. Okay. God Almighty. It's true. There are right names for some things, so, but uh, all throughout my life, that thing was Canter. You know why it was Canter? Well, that was what we are using to learn counting. Uh, I'm sure, no. People like Emmanuel did not use Canter. Did he use Canter? He used Abacus. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. You know that Canter, eh? You will go, especially when you go to party. That time, I remember when we were small. We go to party. We will just, as they are opening all the, all the, um, what's that thing called? Opening all the cook bottles. You have your nylon somewhere. You are packing all the counters there. God now help you. Those people now had a way of making sure that we always keep those counters. They will now, if Martina is not doing redemption, um, Coca Cola is doing redemption, then they will tell you gather seven together, put it inside the envelope, send it to one number by post office. How many people did that thing? Ah, okay. How many people ever want anything by that thing? Free drink, Abby. That was the only thing I want to. Free drink. Oh, there was letter of charge card, Abby. My own was free drink. So you will now go to their depot. You can redeem. <laughs> it's true. There was a lot of try again. Try again. Praise the living Jesus. So, you know, I was going somewhere to redemption. You know, when you gather those crown cock, right? You gather them. There is a price. In those crown cocks, you know, those times they will make you to drink coke like no mat, no, no other, because the grand price is a car. So you'll be drinking to stupor, just buy or mot. Mot used to do that in very well. Those were the days of motonic. How many people know motonic? No motor Guinness, so no Amster motor that you are drinking. Motonic, eh, or or or. I Imot was I Imot was just I Imot was as a motonic. If you know motonic mm -hmm. uh, or motor good, you know motor good. Those are Asian of this. As old as you are. Jesus. Come back to church in Jesus' name. Amen. So that crown coke. You have a price there. And so what you do is you guide it generously. You can even tie it on your wrapper and sleep with it. If that price, that crown coke that has that price, if it goes missing, you can cry. Praise the living Jesus. And the only way you now know that you have gotten the thing is when you now take it to a redemption center. And you give them a can, something that is considered insignificant, and you get something of great value. You would not appreciate it if it was a free drink, but you'd appreciate it then if it was Palito Radio. Because those were some of the things we were winning then. You would appreciate it if it was headsets. You would, you would not appreciate it more if it was a car. Praise the living Jesus. So that was the redemption you had. 
something that's blood. The blood of Jesus was like the crown cook. He had it was the passcode or the passport into the life of God. So all that needed to happen was for that blood to be available. And when you associate with it, with that blood, what happens? You inherit life. Do you understand that? Just the same way that crown cook is, you take it there. Because the blood has a price. And the price of the blood is the life of God. The blood has value. The value of the blood is the life of God. That's why Leviticus 17 says to us that the life of a thing is in its blood. Praise the living Jesus. And do you know what that blood does? Is that the blood... For that blood to enable you to actually live in the full consciousness of your reality. That is, of that life which is of God. You know what that blood does? The blood forgives you your sins. What does it mean to be forgiven? To be forgiven means it discards, it writes off. So it is not your prayer that writes off sin. Hear this. It is not what? Your prayer. Do you know that the prayer for, that's why you wonder that the prayer for forgiveness of sin is shorter than the prayer for blessing. Don't you? Am I speaking heresies? Jesus Christ will come and say, go. Your sins are forgiven you. And they looked at him. <sighs> Only God has power to forgive sin. Which one is go? Your sins are forgiven. Or that the Jew calls altar call. And he says, okay, Father, I accept you into my life. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. In two minutes, they finish forgiveness of sin prayer. But when it is to prayer to pray for yourself and to challenge the forces that are fighting with you, they will give you 30 minutes, one hour. Is that correct? And because the prayer for forgiveness of sin, because forgiveness of sin is the simple, that's why the forgiveness of sin is the simplest thing that the blood does. Because when the issue of forgiveness of sin is being addressed, you know what happens? You come into the fullness of your reality in God. Why? Because the devil's purpose is to witch unto you to make you look bad before God. The devil's purpose is to make you do what? Look bad. The devil is a bad boy. Tell your neighbor the devil is a bad boy. He's a bad boy. Ah, he's a bad boy. He makes you look bad. Say forgiveness of sins. Hope you are going. Hope you are following me this morning. I've prepared your mind. It is a teaching service. So, if you are looking at time for Sunday school, you are wrong. If you are looking at time for choir administration, you are wrong. If you like, if you are looking at time for praise and worship, you are wrong. When we finish, we'll not do choir administration do praise worship and by 10 30 we are out in jesus name i know you want to leave by 10 30. <laughs> hallelujah so there are people that come by 10 o'clock expecting service they will be shocked uh -huh, they will listen to the recording Forgiveness of sins. Tell your neighbor forgiveness of sins. That's why the scripture tells us in F, in Romans chapter eight verse one. Romans chapter eight verse one. 
there is now, there is therefore now no condemnation. You know what? The blood is that which brings you into Christ. So it says, because the blood brings you, please, can you give me that scripture? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, can we go to verse 2? For the law of the spirit of life. Now, this spirit of life here is not the Holy Spirit. Oh. Get this. It's not heresies. Let's come down and look at the Bible. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. What was the law of sin and death? The law of sin and death were the ordinances by which man was governed. They were the ordinances that found us unworthy to access the presence of God. They were the ordinances that made us to begin. So this law of sin and death, what it's it gets its strength from doing. The law of sin and death gets its strength from doing. What do I say? Do you understand what I mean by it gets its strength from doing? Uh, you understand? Can you come and tell me what it means? Somebody said yes, sir. Come and come and tell me. He's a teacher. The law of sin and death. Where's the other mic? gets its strength from doing. From doing. So can you, yeah, yeah, come up. Come, 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 come. Come and talk to us. You have people listening. What I understand by that statement is the law of sin and death gets itself from doing. That is, when we are saying this, we are talking about the law of Moses. It depends on doing. You are what your flesh can do. Can we just celebrate him? So it gets its strength from doing. That is, as he has said, what you can accomplish by your own strength. The law of sin and death. You know, that's why Paul was saying in Romans chapter 10, he says, my prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. Can we go to Romans chapter 10? He says, my prayer for them is that they might be saved. Yes, Romans 10 verse 1. Because I bear them record that they are zealous they have a zeal of God. But not according to what? What is that on the scripture? Not according to what? For what? For verse 3. What does verse 3 say? For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. So the law of sin and death gets its strength from doing. And that's why the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the um, you know, the, uh, the seas, all of them. How many seas do we have in the Bible? Sadducees, Pharisees, the scribes, uh, whichever one, the seas, right? They get their, you know, they, they, they would always, it is, oh, can't you see me? It's an holier than thou attitude. Holier than thou attitude. You look down on that person because of the way the person looks like and you think that God can never use that person. My brother, you are wrong. The law of sin and death. Because well, you know what he does? That law finds faults. And when it finds faults, what is the consequence of faults? I said it earlier on that when there is a fault, when a fault is detected, what is the penalty? Death. Praise the living Jesus. So, the law of sin and death. But it says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ. What is the law of the spirit of life? There is a law that governs the entity called life. And what is that thing? It is the blood. 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 Do you understand what I just said? I hope I'm not speaking something out of out of it's simple. 
These things I'm telling you. The Holy Ghost came to teach me this morning. I have not slept at all. As in, I have not slept since last night. Eh? The Holy Ghost came to teach me. So, listen. The law of the spirit of life. I said something about the blood. That the blood, just like that redemption cock, right? It's considered to be something worthless. And that's why the scribes, the Pharisees, it was difficult for them to receive that life because how would you just tell me that the blood of Jesus has made me right with God? How would you just say the blood of a man? Come on, we know his father. We know his mother. We know his sister. He plays away with our children. How would you tell me that that guy that we know, it is his blood that brought me into a new realm in God. So they go about going about to establish their own strength, establish their own righteousness. And you know the funny thing is that the scripture said that the way the law was designed, the law was designed in such a way that it will find faults. The law was designed in a way that it will find fault. Because you know what? It was, not, it was never in God's intention for man to be self-sufficient. It was never in God's intention for man to be self-sufficient. God. If God created self-sufficiency in man, then it would have been much more easier for man to attain righteousness by the law. It would have been much more easier. Man would have attained righteousness long time ago. And so God began to show us after the episode of Adam was gone, God tried to start with Noah. And there was, you know, there was corruption, manipulation. Tried something with Abraham. There was pollution. God kept on trying. At some point, man came and they said, you know what? We think we know it all. Let's get for ourselves kings like other countries do. And God was angry. You know that? Because God said, these guys are saying they want to be self-sufficient, right? Okay. Give them a king. And the reason why God rejected Saul. Do you know that God rejected Saul the very, from the very first day that Saul was appointed king? You don't understand God rejected Saul from the very day he was appointed king. God, but because it was a system of man dependence, it was a system of human strength. God, the law, it's just like they put a law for traffic lights. The law of traffic lights, do not beat traffic lights, is to make you comply. But I can bet you, that law also will have lacuna. They tell you in law, in, if you did law, there's something they call lacuna. You know what they call a lacuna? A lacuna is a gap. Why do you think that lawyers will keep on selling? Why do you think that lawyers will keep on selling? Do you know why lawyers will keep on selling? The same law, eh, the same basis for which you took me to the courts, in that same basis, I will draw out the weakness of that ground. Do you understand? We don't have legal people here. You don't understand what I'm saying. If you keep, if you, if you, why do you think that it is people that steal ram and goats that they sentenced to life imprisonment? People that steal billions and millions of naira. The law we have in Nigeria does not. It has a gap that. You cannot find anything against them. You will never. Because the law was designed to only find people that steal sheep, goats, yam. They will even do it for you that the person that stole billions of naira, by the time they appoint him or they sentence him to life, to some auntie, don't 
it means you are not following. Oh. It's not offering time. Oh. Uh, okay. Sit down. As in, you know, there are some meetings. You are not even an usher. You are a, you are a, you are a partaker of his divine nature. Uh, celebrate, uh, Sister Bright. Uh, God bless you. Well, but it's good, Sean. If you pass offering, we can collect offering two times. We'll collect inspiration offering, and the second offering will be redemption offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the law. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ. How was that law administered? It was administered by the blood. Say the blood. Ah, you are saying it gently. Say the blood. Say eje. Ejere. Ejere. Ah, is that how you, if you see blood, how will you scream, Motunayo? Ah, eje. I remember the day I was in primary school and we were doing Jagilova, Ekumoto, Majo Tutu, Ekumoto. Latin too is Jangilova, we always call it. Too. What's the real name for people that went to British American school? Eh? Swing row. Swing row. Oh, it's swing, have eh? we? Ah. Some people pull road there for us. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Your school, is it, was it a British curriculum they taught there? Okay. Your school, was it British curriculum? American curriculum? Montessori? Did they teach Montessori in your school? No. Montessori. So in your school, it was swing grow, right? Can you see there's a difference in these things now? Uh, swing grow. <laughs> there are different types. There's merry go round. There's what? There's seesaw. Mori and Okay. All right. So. We were doing Jagrova, Ekumoto. Oh, sorry, they said swing. We were doing swing. And then that's how this lady just came and pushed me away from the thing. And you know, not like the swing they do in these days. The swing they used to do in those times. It is, when they say something is high on, it is high on. It's, 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 you, will not, you will not confirm to know if it is high on. At least, where's uh, Pastor Sam? You can know. The door that's there's a glass door that used to be somewhere here before. Eh? That thing is glass door. It looks legge legge, but if you try and go and carry it, uh, I mean, Pastor, you know that thing uh, is heavy. It looks very simple, gel, gel, but that thing is, it was confirmed high on. They used to do it. So my head touched that thing. And the next thing was the head opened up. I did not know. I just stood up and I was like, I was just talking to the lady. I was like, ah, you know, that's why I said, no, I don't want to be. I say, so. I should not try. <laughs> and I was talking to the lady and I was like, ah, but why did you push me now? You know, it was my turn. You know, why, why, why? You know, uh, and uh, eh? I was actually talking like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking to the lady like that. And the next day, he just said, Benga, look at your head. Look. Uh, I was like, which one is look at your head? Yare. By the time I put my hand like this, oh, Jesus. It was edgy. I just, ah! Uh, oh! <laughs> that was the last thing I knew. That was the last, as in, they ended up stitching that head. They stitched Head. And that was the time when there was no even GSM, there was no telephone. I don't even know how they got through to my to my mother. As in, they rushed me to the hospital, placed me on whatever, passed me out. They gave me what's that a bed that makes you sleep? Sedative, baby. Uh -huh. They gave me that thing, slept off. They stitched the head, you know. So if I do Gary, maybe that time when I did Gori Makpa, you will have seen one mark on my head somewhere. That's the sign. It's been there. There's a mark. And so you can imagine that the blood of Jesus, when that blood was offered, there was a mark on Jesus' body. And that's why the scripture says, by his stripes, we were healed. We were. Praise the living Jesus. 
So who is the believer? One who has come to terms with the sacrifice for sin paid where? On the cross. And redemption by what? The blood of Jesus. Who is the believer? Number two, who is the believer? The believer is one who has no confidence in the flesh. He has no confidence in the flesh. He has no confidence in the flesh, but relies on the supply of God's spirit. He has no confidence in the flesh, but relies on the supply of God's spirit. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 to the 4. Can you read that? It says, for we are the circumcision. No, can you continue? Um, verse, verse 3. My focus is verse 3. Yes, for we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in who? Okay, can we read that again, again together? Church, want to go? For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus. Now, rejoice who worship God in the spirit does not mean you come into a spiritual posture to worship God. Though. Do you understand? Let's break it down. In the law, a way to know that you are of God is there are something called circumcision. Is that correct? Huh? So, you know, the Gentiles were not circumcised. The Jews were what? Were circumcised. And circumcision was a covenant of exemption, of identification, which God gave to Abraham. You know, circumcision started from Abraham. When God told Abraham, so I'm starting a new generation through you. So the way they will be known is that they will be circumcised. So Abraham circumcised everyone that was in his family. Both of age, under age. Because God was starting something new. And you know, so the way it was at that time to differentiate the believer, to differentiate the Jews from the Gentiles, was the token of circumcision. So, in the new covenants, because the law has been done away with. Now, the law being done away with does not mean that God made a mess of the law. God did not make a mess of the law. Tell your neighbor, God did not make a mess of the law. God did not discard the law. But rather, what God did was that God fulfilled the requirement of the law in Christ. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 8. Can we quickly go to Romans chapter 8? Then we'll come back here. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Let's read from verse right. Yes. What's that? See, you know, one thing the law sought to establish was righteousness, right? I mentioned that earlier, right? God gave us the law to bring about righteousness. But the original intent was that man would attain righteousness by dependence on God, not by self-righteousness. So it says that what? The righteousness, another place puts it that the righteous requirements of the law might be fulfilled in us. Okay, yes, from verse 4. That the righteousness and just requirements, yes, amplified. And the, that the righteous and just requirements of the law might be what? Fully met. Can you tell your neighbor? Fully met. Ah, oh, that is wrong. That is low. Fully met. Do you know what it means to be fully met? When you meet a requirement, this is it. Baby, come. Baby, come. You tell God, God, give me fine babe. And you begin to tell God, Lord, these are the requirements. Lord, not too tall, not too short, not too dark, not too fair. 
fine face, good looking, sweet voice, so shoe is shining. And God now says to you, Hey, brother, I have answered your prayer. The requirement you gave to me, this is the requirement. <laughs> Brothers, what will you say? Uh, say? You say, thank you, Jesus. Because this meets what? Specification. But if the person is, you know, uh, you know, guys have different specs. Some wants horrible. Some wants leper. Some wants people that they can easily, you know, maybe they need to do some exercise of the hand. You know, babe, come, let me just. Holiday is coming. Holiday is coming. <laughs> you can not the one that you say, Mami Beru me Baba. You know, so I, I, I have a guy, I have a friend, eh? That's my friend. The only person he can date, if you are not big size, is a turn off. So that person that wants God bless me, Yafu Yafu. And you now give this requirement. He would tell God, God now, but this is not what we asked for now. I said I wanted somebody did that. A carry front, a carry back, a full package. I can't deny. SS load, I mean. So the scripture is telling us, I can't see them. <laughs> All right. Can you just celebrate her? Huh? All right. So what does it say? In that verse 4, amplified, it says that the righteous requirements was fully what? Met. So, it was fully met in us who do what? Who live and who live and move not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways, what? Of the spirits. Our lives govern not by the standards and according to the dictate of the flesh, but what's controlled by the Holy Spirit. So that's why, so you can see this here. So that's why you would see in that scripture that we read, in Philippians chapter 8, in Philippians chapter 3 rather, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. Can we go back to that scripture? Philippians chapter 3 verse 3. That the circum we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit. That is... The need for circumcision had been accomplished in Christ for us. So I don't need to be circumcised to be identified as a Jew. Praise the living Jesus. That is, there is no element of distinction to say okay, these ones are the Jews. That's why Paul said, he says, there is no longer Jews or Greek. It is what? One. We've been made one before God. And we have no confidence in the flesh. Having no confidence in the flesh means that you don't have confidence or you don't boast in anything that you can achieve by yourself and for yourself. Praise the living Jesus. The third thing that the believer is, the believer has the seal of redemption in the person of the Holy Spirit who has been given as a confirmation or token of our salvation. I think we talked about this during when we treated about the Holy Spirit. We said the Holy Spirit has been given to us. The evidence of our authenticity, our authenticity with God is the Holy Spirit given to us. So what the Holy Spirit does is that the Holy Spirit authenticates our originality with God. So the believer is that person who has received that seal. Ephesians 1.13. It says he has sealed you 
with the Holy Spirit of promise. And I did explain then that the Holy Spirit is no longer of promise. It was of promise then because Jesus had not died. But now the Holy Spirit is no longer of promise. And you know why? Without the Holy Spirit, you are not a believer. Now, hear this. Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. Tell your neighbor, Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues. So that you don't go and think that I said, without the Holy Spirit, you are not a believer. And you will now say, because you don't speak in tongues, pastor has said you are not a believer. No. Even though if you don't speak in tongues, that does not mean you are not a believer. You are a believer. But it just means that your belief has not grown to the level of knowing that the Holy Ghost is already inside of you. The problem sometimes is that some people, you are waiting for something to hit your mouth and before you start talking. You need a divine slap. Oh yeah. Start talking. You know, some people help you. There are some, there, there are some churches, they help you to walk in that gift of praying the Holy Ghost. Come. It's, they call it school of the spirits. They teach you, this is the order. Sit down. We teach you. This is the way of the spirit. It gives you, like a child, when a child wants to start, how many people you have children? Auntie, when your baby was going to start talking, eh? did anything you say make sense to you? Did you tell the baby and say, start talking? Eh? So, get this. The ability to speak, was it within that child? Okay? Then the child need a prompt to talk. Uh, I've lost you. The ability to speak, was it in that child? Did the child need a prompt to speak? No. So, the child just decided to open the mouth and it was and speak. The reason why some people who have been waiting and tarrying, they say they tarry to carry. What are you tarrying? They only tarried because Jesus Christ had not been hung on the tree. And he says, go and tarry in Jerusalem. But after Jesus Christ was crucified and he resurrected, there is no tarrying to carry any longer. Why? Because the moment you just say, Lord, I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Your spirit lives on the inside of me. I am governed by your spirit. The Holy Ghost is inside. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is the evidence that you are a believer. So if they say pray in tongues, don't wait for one thing to see. If the pastor says, come, let me pray for you in tongues. And, pastor say, and as the pastor is praying for you, believe and start saying, ba 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 do you know that thing is by faith? Oh, okay. Don't worry. Oh, my. It's by faith. It's by... The day, the, the, the way I got baptized eh, in the Holy Ghost, I read the book of my Bible story that as Jesus Christ came out of water, Laba Laba came. Abi, what's that thing? Eh, yeah, Daba. Eh, yeah, Daba. Eh, yeah, Daba is dope, Abi. Came on Jesus. I stayed on him. And the Holy Ghost came upon him. I read it in the scripture, Matthew chapter 3, read it in the scripture, Luke chapter 3, oh my, oh my, oh my. By the time they brought me out of the water, in Jesus' name we are baptized. I started speaking. It is ba 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 ba. From ba 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 is a ba ba. A ba ba. A ba ba. From Ababa, Ababa Dagada. From Ababa Dagada, is Ilemo Sonterevo, Queen Nakata, Yaramu Susai, Elevre Kuskiva, Kaeli, Infra Zuzu, Johanska. You know, you don't have a fizzy tongues. Dime ah, Kai. There are dimensions to tongue, you know. Tell your neighbor, there are dimensions to tongue. In. Ah, if you are still doing ba 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 ba, you are wrong. <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> But it starts by faith. It's, not, it, it, it's a language of the spirit. It's, it, it's just the same way they teach you syllable. 
a child, you know the problem? The problem that when people say they want the gift of the Holy Spirit, the problem they have is that because they hear people speaking, they too, they want to start speaking. A child did not learn, Daddy, I want to go to the toilet in one day. It started with, ba, ba. Before I went to Baba, da, dada, dada, migrated to daddy, daddy, ma, mama, mommy, I want to eat, graduation. So that's why those guys, when they do school of the spirit, they teach them that, that order. And you know what? The devil has, has robbed some people and you tell them when they lay hands on you, say, it is not there. It, the person laying hands on you is not giving you anything. He's only just trying to activate what is on the inside already. Paul said that which was inside of you. He says, just yet to flame. It's on the inside of you. You don't pray for the Holy Ghost to come into you. The Holy Ghost resides in you. A believer does not ask for the Holy Ghost to come again. He has the Holy Ghost on the inside. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. And that's why the Bible says to us in Romans chapter 8 verse 9, it says, if no man has the spirit, he is none of his. So, we said, we we're talking about the Holy Ghost, you know, the believer. So, we've talked about four things about the believer. Ah, we are still on identification of the believer. <laughs> I'm still on, I'm still on page one. <laughs> Page two. <laughs> Page three. Page four. Don't worry. I'm sure some of us we are still on page one in our notes. <laughs> if so far in this class you have not you have not written two pages, you are wrong. <laughs> You've written two. Uh, you are wrong. Especially if you are someone like me that if you see the way I jot. I write the scripture out. Write the test. Even write the story that, that the Jew said. <laughs> or the person is preaching. That's how I jot. All right. Okay. So the last about the identification of the believer. The believer is one who is identified by the name of Jesus. <laughs> I love this. The believer is one who is identified by the name of Jesus and functions within the perimeter of that name. It functions within the perimeter of that name. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So your salvation is not sure until there is a call on that name. What does it mean to call that name? To call that name means to activate. Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 10 to 12. Acts of Apostles chapter 4 verse 10 to 12. There is no salvation in any other name than the name of Jesus, whereby we must be saved. Act of Apostles chapter 2, verse 38. Paul, Peter there was talking about repent and be baptized everyone in the name of Jesus for the remissions of your sins. And Mark chapter 16, verse 17. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Now, hear this. Uh, uh, can we pro project that scripture? That's Mark. I, I saw this scripture in a new light recently. You know, in English, there's what we call punctuations, right? When you see something like exclamation, it expresses shock, right? Surprise. Abby? When you see something like 
this. It's what? Questioning, probing, right? When you see something like full stop, end of a sentence, of a statement, when you see a semicolon, it's telling you that we've not ended, but there is a part two. Abby, there's a continuation. Praise the living Jesus. Someone was here looking. Uh, uh, looking. See, it's very good for you to go and um, go and be doing some use of English sometimes. Uh, if I go and try and do lexis and structure now, it's going to let me. It will be by the grace of God I will get 15 over 20. Because sometimes they might ask you all those synonyms, antonyms, and then uh, Anthony. Attorney General. All right. So, it says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You know, they put a semicolon there. It's not that there is a part two. You know what the correct construct is supposed to be? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You did not see what I just said. No, you know it. What did I just say? These signs, because if it says these signs shall follow them that believe, you can believe in anything. Church, are you with me? You can believe in anything. Is that correct? I can believe in Babalawo. I can believe in my father. I can believe in my wife. I can believe in myself. And that's why you can sing, I believe I can fly. Even though there is no wings. Eh? You spread your wings and fly away. Why are you flying to? That's how one of my friends believes he can fly. By watching Superman and Batman. And my friend went to go and take um, his mother's rapper. Tight on the neck like Superman. I believe I can fly. And the guy actually flew. <laughs> From upstairs. <laughs> ah, oh <my. laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> you don't want to know what you then do. <laughs> 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 okay. The guy, not makeup story, oh, true life story. The guy fly. <laughs> I believe I can fly. <laughs> As the guy flew like this, the rapper just hooked the. <laughs> You know, back in those days, our fences used to have all this spoke, shuku shuku. You know that in there? Because those times, if you don't put it on your fence, arm robbers will just be walking on your fence anyhow. It was the shuku shuku. <laughs> My head is close here, <laughs> beside his tummy. <laughs> the guy was on the fence. Mom, help! Help me! <laughs> Hmm. Ah, or was it not when, or was it not, or was it not when we were growing up too? We were growing up too. My younger brother and I, we were doing, we were doing, um, that's why I don't watch Smackdown in my house. So. We were doing Smackdown. And you know how those Royal Rumble things will be? They will stand on one thing, jump from one place, down. Oh boy, now we, so we do Royal Rumble. Jumped it in. I believe. I, yes, I got it. And you know, if you watch those things, the person that they are jumping on, when it is that that person is coming, I call right Yera. That's what I did Yera for my brother. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> the guy landed with this thing. <laughs> All I was here was, oh, 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 oh. Oh boy. Uh, and that time there was no GSN, there was no phone, there was no. The guy was crying, crying. By the time mommy came back, oh boy, and on, and on, and on this place <laughs> carried us to hospital. <laughs> now, white cement, though. <laughs> Do you know what they call white cement? POP. Ah. Hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> Where we went to my son's school, went to my son's school um, last week, and um, for their games um, stuff, club day, right? And so they had different clubs, 
And one of the crops they have too was Karak. So when they were done, the head teacher came to come and appeal to parents and says, parents, we beg you in the name of the Lord. When we started this Karak class, we were about 25. But now the number of poopies there have reduced to 14. <laughs> that please, Karak is good for self-defense. Is now you want woman that sat down beside me and said, I don't hear you. Now you now you talk. My begin don't break everything for us. I don't know showed me the front. I said, Ah, my own is Power Rangers. <laughs> Grown up, seven and five. They were jumping. I did not know that they they are still showing Power Rangers. I did not know. It was just uh, maybe this week I saw it on Cartoon Network. Ah, was it Nickelodeon? It's Cartoon Network. Eh? You know people that watch it. It was just, I just saw pa- Power Rangers. Ah, he said they are in my house. It was PJ Max that wanted to cause trouble, and I said no more cartoon in this house. No more. Nope. If my son says says cartoon, ah, he will be happy. Say okay, daddy. Okay, yes. Okay, I should watch cartoon. Yes, yeah, watch cartoon. But you know what? Your cartoon is just when it is five o'clock. Daddy will come and watch football. Understood? Okay, no problem. You have that conversation. But before then, eh, oh boy, the whole world we know. So, this sign shall follow them that believe. So, what are you believing in? Believing in what? In the name. So it is when you believe in that name that you can actually say you are a believer. Praise the living Jesus. So when you believe in that name, some of the benefit of believing in that name is that you start to cast out demons. You start to lay hands on the sick. And you you see, see, and they shall speak with what? In new tongues. You will not look for somebody to slap your mouth or one spirit to slap your mouth before he starts speaking new tongues. I believe in his name. Just the same way you say, I believe in Jesus. Oh, yeah, I believe. Okay, I will speak new tongues. Oh, God, you said I will speak new tongues. So, okay. And I start speaking. Praise the living Jesus. I think I helped somebody's faith already, have you? So if you don't know how to speak, when you get home, go and be speaking. Praise the living Jesus. Now, we are going to the next outline. The believer as a Christian. And the question is, is the believer a Christian? Or when does the believer become a Christian? Is the believer a Christian? Or when does the believer become a Christian? Sister... Raimi, is the believer a Christian or the believer grows into becoming a Christian? Ah, sorry, oh yeah, uh, explain. Uh, explain. Yes. Okay, so I get, I get, so I get, I get, I get what you say. <sighs> so you first become a believer, then you grow into becoming a Christian. Okay, I hear that one. Where's, um, oh yeah, tell me. Microphone, tell me. Tell me. Sunday school on the last day. Oh, yeah. Ah, please, Mike. It's not working. Uh, Soros, okay, Soros. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, yeah, he will talk. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, talk. Amen. Ah, she's using the other mic. Oh, yeah, come and use this one. Don't worry. Come, 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 come. The microphone actually did not work. Praise Lord. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, is a believer a Christian? A believer, okay, first start from. Is a boy child a man? No, a boy child is not a man, but eventually 
with the right nutrition, with the right growth, a boy child becomes a man. So the first step to being, you can't be a Christian if you're not a believer. Yeah, so every Christian is a believer. So when you give your life to Christ, you're a believer. But then Christian, it's Christian comes from a place of lifestyle. So you eventually can identify as a Christian because there is a lifestyle that we see in you, just like was seen in the lives of the apostles at Antioch, and they were called Christians. So the first step is believer. A believer is not necessarily a Christian if you do not see the lifestyle that represents Christ, because it's just believing. That's the first step, yeah. So which is not different from what um, Sister Oya, oh yeah, can you please clap for two of them? Yeah, that's correct. So a believer, so the first entry point is you believing, right? Uh, church, are we alive? The first entry point is you what? Believing. So you being acknowledged as a believer, right? So what that word Christian defines something. And she said something very excellent. She said... A Christian is definitely what? A believer. Okay. I want to ask another question. Is a believer a saint? <laughs> saint Michael. Saint Paul. <laughs> Let's start with Saint Paul. Okay, Saint Paul, believe me. <laughs> oh, yeah, Saint Paul. Saint Paul. <laughs> St. Paul Memorial Grammar School. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, you have to say the prayer. <laughs> 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 uh, when we talk about... Ah, uh, okay, put the thing up. Okay. Let's hear. When we talk about someone being a saint, someone who has been washed in the blood of Christ, whose name has been written in the book of life, who has is a believer in God. So a believer in God is a saint. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, thank you, sir. So can we put our hands? All right. So a believer is a saint. Can you tell your neighbor, a believer is a saint? So a believer is a what? Is a saint. You know, maybe the early church, when I mean the early church, I'm not talking about the church in the Bible. I'm talking about the colonial masters that brought Christianity to us. I think the confusion they gave to us was that a saint is that person that has died and gone to heaven that was martyred for the sake of the gospel. So that's why all the churches they were naming were St. Andrew, St. Luke, St. John. There is no sense Benga Catholic <laughs> Church. <laughs> you know you are a saint, you know that. Tell your neighbor, do you know you are a saint? What did your neighbor say? Eh? So can you can you can you introduce yourself with your new identity now? Oh yeah. Your own is even sweet. <laughs> <laughs> his own is evil sweet because his name is Paul already. Saint Taiwo. <laughs> Saint Believe. <laughs> uh -huh. Saint Comfort. <laughs> Hallelujah. A believer is a what? Is a saint. And you know, there are so many scriptures in, in the early church, you know, during the time of Paul, Peter the way they recognize, they refer to the church as the saints of God. The church of the saints. You know, very many scriptures. You know, let me just give you some scriptures because we are not staying there. You know, like Colossians 1.4, Colossians 1.4, you can put that down. Um, Romans 1.7, Romans 1.7, Romans 8.27, Romans 8.27, Romans 12.13, Romans 12.13, Ephesians 1, 1, and 15 to 18. Ephesians 1, verse 1, and 15 to 18. Ephesians 3, verse 8. Ephesians 3, verse 8. Colossians 1, 26. 
Colossians 1 26, Colossians 1 12, Jude 1 3, Jude 1 3, and Philemon 1 5. You know, there are a lot of scriptures about saints. So, but we've explained it extensively. A saint is a believer. So, saints are not dead people who have gone to heaven, but rather they are those who have been redeemed by the blood and brought near by the blood into God's family. So, you know what a saint is? A saint is a community of God's children. A community of God's children. So, that's our identity. Eh? When we are brought into the family, you know, we are in God's family. So, our identity is that we are the saints of God. We've been washed by his blood. We have his life in us. Praise the living Jesus. But as we learn as a believer, when you believe, there's a need for you to mature. And you would see in Acts of Apostles chapter 11 verse 26 that we read. You know, we always, always focus only on and the apostles were first called or the church was first called Christians in Antioch. Before that time, you did not look at what preceded it. Can we go to Acts eleven twenty six? See what is there. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that for a what? A whole year. Kai. For a whole... Did you, have you ever seen that in your Bible before? You just go to this part B. You know one lazy thing about the uh, Bible? Is that sometimes... In a memory verse, we cram the easy parts. But what did he say? You know, we know and the, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. But why don't we look at that a whole year they assembled together with the church and taught much people. So for one year, they were sitting, learning, learning, learning. You know, do you know the danger of, <laughs> you know, I went to one of my friend's church and they said something. They said, Sunday service, he must teach his people so that they can have sense. Midweek service, they don't go show. Say, but that's Sunday. I go, <laughs> but that's Sunday. <laughs> he said, there was a day, the teaching was, on prayer. He taught prayer finish. One hour plus after I finish. He said, Do we teach prayer? I said, We'll practicalize next week Sunday. He said, No, let's practicalize it now. Oh, yeah. They practicalize Sunday. You know, you know, see, we are very weak because you know why? We have become two minutes noodles Christians. When the message is already 40 minutes, your brain is dozing off. But when Big Brother Africa is 12 hours, your brain is recharging. The things of the world recharges our brain. The things of God shuts down our brain. That's why somebody will tell you that sleep is not coming. You cannot sleep. Carry the Bible and read. Kai! It's an insult to the Bible. Or don't you think so? It's an insult. Abby? So it means that if... So the Bible is... So I carry the Bible to sleep. <laughs> I carry the Bible to sleep. I don't carry the Bible to be alive. And you know we say it jokingly. I have someone. There was a time the person was battling insomnia. I know that. You have insomnia. But that person can watch series. Series will continue, continue. Series will never end. It will continue. But you know what? If the person should, um, you know, if the person should, ah, Pastor Inka, Ewale. But if the person should undo series for you on Netflix, church, don't be distracted. Just continue. 
if the person should if the person should carry Netflix, it can be on Netflix for forever. So you tell people you want to sleep, carry Bible. You have you have you have you have downgraded the word of God into something that does not steer, that does not motivate, that does not inspire. There was a movie I watched on Netflix recently. I was chatting with my younger brother. We were just chatting. That movie, they said it's Anila uh, or something. They called the movie. I don't know. They said it was the story of somebody and all that. That movie took me one week to watch. <laughs> one week. One week. You know, because me, if you want me to sleep early, tell me to come and watch movie. Oh. That's my own. So if I carry the tea like this, if I look at this, uh, 20 minutes, I'm gone. Uh, uh, my wife said 15 minutes. I'm gone. But if you give me, but if you give me, come and sit down, listen to message, study, read book, my energy will what? With ginger. So going back to Acts 11, 26. And they were forced, called Christians in Antioch. But before they were called Christians, the scripture said that they had gathered there for what? One year. What were they doing? They were not gathered for one year. Gisting. They were not gathered for one year. Looking. They were not gathered for one year. Gossiping. They were gathered for one year digging, looking intently, inwardly into the word of God. The scripture told us that Paul got to a certain place and he had you the scripture with them for three years there. Jesus! Your Jesus, my Jesus. The scripture told us when he ascended for 40 days, morning, afternoon, night, Morning. Jesus was teaching kingdom for 40 days. Some of us can't even teach kingdom for one hour. If I tell some people, come and talk about God's kingdom. What they will remember is, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. They move to, the kingdom of God is not in fruit and meat. And they will say, the kingdom of God is in heaven. And they finish. <laughs> or the kingdom of God is about violence. Jesus taught, he said, he taught for 40 days and nights things pertaining to the kingdom. You know, and that's why, you know, Daddy Gio used to say, that, 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 see, you, when you see that he preach on Sunday, I mean, you see that he preach on Holy Ghost Service Day. Holy Ghost Service Day is not a teaching for depth and, and growth. It's a teaching for people who are looking for miracles, signs and wonder. Get it. That's it. So he sat forty days. Things pertaining to the kingdom. For one year was with them. There's a man in a place called Boko. You know, things that relate to the things of the kingdom. Sometimes, don't, you know, see, 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 see. Let me tell you something. Kingdom teachers, when you see teachers that teach kingdom, sometimes they may not have, they may, they may not have the clouds, the publicity, the, the crowd, because you know why? Our generation don't listen to kingdom. They listen to Babylon. Uh, and so they will look for someone that will come, use the anointing, steer them up. You know, if it's... Uh, we like fall down, die. Fall down, you know. Everybody fall down, scatter, and break your head. Yeah, that's the only way we know God is in the place. 
kingdom. There's a brother in Boko, Billy Akoni. Ah! Three days. One scripture. As in one scripture. Three days. What are they saying? Three days. One scripture. Why do you see me? It will happen. Your brain will open. Go for minister's conference. That is you. About four sessions, four days. Sunday nights, Monday morning, afternoon nights, Tuesday morning, afternoon nights, um, Wednesday morning, afternoon nights, Thursday morning, solemn assembly. Daddy will teach on one scripture. Kingdom. Things pertaining unto the kingdom. And those are the things that build you from that realm of you being a believer into you actually. Because you know what? It is the things that you are exposed to, you begin to find it manifest in you. Right? And that's why they could call them Christians. So, they call them Christians not necessarily because they believed. But they call them Christians because they are believed caused them to search and as they were searching they were becoming second corinthians 3 18 as we behold we are transformed 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 tell your neighbor we are transformed 318. So Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is not a sect. It's not a community. It's not a congress. It is not a group identity. Rather, it is a life calling. Christianity is a life calling. So the call of a believer upon your life. So when you receive that call, then you are identified as a Christian. Christianity or a Christian or let me say Christianity is an ordination into a life of Christ-centered living. An ordination into a life of Christ-centered living. What did I say? An ordination into a life of Christ-centered living. Shago, what did I say? That's it. Uh, I'm a teacher. You, you are trying to read it from somebody's book. Okay. I'm a psychologist. <laughs> no, no, no. It's that brother. You know, when I said, uh, uh, the man, uh, but you know, it was from the lips, it was not from the heart. And that's why when I said, what did I say? You still have to go and check inside somebody's book. You know, that's the only way we can grow as believers. So Christianity is an ordination into a life of Christ centered living. What did I say? An ordination into a life of Christ centered living. What is Christianity? It is a call. Because I said Christianity has to do with a call, a life call. So, what is a call? What is Christianity? It is a call into a selfless, a selfless and Godful living. Mm. Did not hear that. A selfless and a Godful. It is not Godful. It's not one L. It is two L. God, I think, full. Self, I think, less. That is why it says, I am crucified. 
Galatians 2.20. Right? I am what? Crucified. That is, I do not exist in the equation. So it is Christ. That is, I see. So what is Christianity? Number one, ordination. What is an ordination? Ordination that we know is one that really and really But do you know that the ordination that you have, the ordination that you have, there was nobody that laid hands on you. It was the blood that brought you into the family. So by that blood, that blood was the mechanism for your ordination. Because you could not become a Christian except you had believed. And for you to believe, there was a need for the application of the blood. So that the blood would destroy the strongholds of hell and darkness. And will release you into the life of God. Praise the living Jesus. So it's a call into a selfless and so a Christian. So when you see a Christian that or you see someone that says he's a Christian, that professes to be a Christian, but everything about him amplifies self and pushes God to the backstage then he's not a Christian. Because everything about you must point to God. And that's why we said a God fool. The word godliness is telling us that, you know, God, you, 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 you promote everything that is God. You advocate for everything that is God. You are found in the center of everything that is God. So when we find ourselves in the midst of things that are not God, then we need to check. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7, For God has not called us into unrighteousness, but he has called us into what? Holiness. So another word for godliness is holiness. Holiness is, I can interchange holiness and godliness or godfulness. Another word for holiness is godfulness. Why? Because holy is God. God is holy. So if we are saying something is holy, uh, you know, then we are saying it is God. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. So your identity as a Christian isn't to represent a community, but rather represents Jesus. Tell your neighbor, your identity as a Christian, or can you say it? My identity as a Christian is to represent Jesus. Acts eleven twenty six. the Bible says, and they represented Jesus, and they were acknowledged, and they were called Christians. You know what? Many times, you should not be the one to wear the tag of a Christian. You sh it should be the word that will tag you a Christian. In Acts eleven twenty six, they did not go about to say we are Christians. Praise the living Jesus. Ah. You, you, you should not be the one going about to say wear the tag. Ah, let them know, uh, you know, I'm a Christian. Where is it? I'm a Christian. They should be able to look at you and say, ah, yes, this one is a Christian. He's a child of God. So it is not by your earring. It's not by your hair. It's not by your makeup. It will shock you that some people on makeup will cast out demons. It will shock you that some people on trusses will cast out demons. And you, that's, you are looking like the granddaughter of Jesus. In Jesus' name, go out. And the demon will look at you. Okay. From which level? When did we start? Uh, what are you doing? Yeah. Why? Because we must not have 
Christianity has to do away with anything self. Anything self. Now, are you saying, Pastor, are you saying it's wrong not to use your ring or it's wrong to use your ring? Let me tell you, the truth is no God for yourself. There are people that God intentionally told don't wear your ring. There are people God specifically instructed you don't put on trusses. But if God told me don't put on trusses, will I say because God said I should not put on trusses, every other person that put on trusses is a sinner? No. Do you get where I'm going to? There must be a balance of personal conviction and doctrine. The reason why the church is in a mess today is because one man's personal conviction he imposed it as a doctrine. And he silenced the voice of God over that subject. I love what Papa Kumuyi is doing. <laughs> Papa Kumi said, I will correct every wrongs that I did before I go. In deeper life back then, if you wear chinos or jeans, you are a sinner. <laughs> I have a friend there. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a rebel. As an original rebel. His father is one of the dicky or whatever. Because of that, he will go and wear that jeans to church. For you and who, your father. You are very well church tell <laughs> oh boy. Oh, you know, there are people that God told don't wear jeans. There are people that God told don't wear your ring. There are people that God told don't palm your hair. Okay, if God told you, that's fine. Don't come and impose your self-government on the people of God and telling them that this is what God says. Sometimes when God is calling you into a work, it might be a personal work and not a general work. That was the error Abraham committed. God called Abraham. He did not call Lot's. So sometimes the reason why we don't want to walk alone is because we want to make it acceptable to everybody. I would say, let us start a community. Whereas God is saying, I'm okay with you. Do you know what God is looking for? God is not always looking for multitude. He's always looking for a man. I sought for a man. I sought for a man. Oh, man. So I think I've balanced it. If you wear trouser, glory to God. If you don't wear trouser, glory to God. If you do earring, glory to God. If you don't wear earring, glory to God. If you paint your face, glory to God. Just don't paint your face and somebody will misplace you for another person's wife. Because some people can make up their face and when you see your wife, you don't recognize your wife again. You take his another person. You would have gone past the person's head. Your wife would say, oh, when you come here, I'm greeting you. Sorry, I did not recognize you. Oh, sorry, is it you? Then you begin to touch. <laughs> to be sure that it's your wife. <laughs> you know, makeup can change your configuration. Eh? It's a fraud, Abby. <laughs> As a guy, if you are looking for a babe, <laughs> they always say, go and check her. Early in the morning, when she's just waking up from bed. <laughs> eh? Wake up in makeup. <laughs> See rhymes. Wake up in makeup. Hmm. Food for thoughts. Wake up in makeup. Quote by Elizabeth Sheffley. So your identity as a Christian is not to represent a community, but rather represent what? Jesus. These days, we do the tagging rather than letting men do the tagging. We want people to say we are 
Christians. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 6, Let your light so shine that they might see your works. Matthew 5 16, Let your light so shine. Tell your neighbor, let your light so shine. Now, so the question I want you to ask your neighbor is, ask your neighbor, how pure, pleasant, pleasing, and precious is your work? If the Bible is saying, let your light so shine, then the question is, how pure, pleasant, and pleasing is that work? Because 1 Corinthians 3.13 says, Every work will be tested by fire to prove the quality and substance of that work. So the believer's conduct. As a believer, also known as a Christian, there are certain expectations how we are to conduct ourselves in the affairs of this earth realm. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15 tells us that we actually live in an environment in a realm that is tagged as a crooked and a perverse system. A very crook and perverse system. I was sharing with my wife um, about, you know, we drove past somewhere and we saw a big school, and um, I don't think I've seen much activities in that school. But I told my wife, I said, this person should have just used that money to build, turn into a real estate something, and build so that people can live in the house. And please, we'll fetch money. She said, are you saying people should not go to school? That people don't value education? I said, no, that's not the question. That's not the problem. People value education, but they don't value process. They don't value processed education. Processed education is better than served education. There is served education. In case you don't know, there is served. Many people have distinctions that they can't defend. So they served them. What service? Well, no. If you start a school in Lagos and it is not a miracle center, that school will not grow. The only way that school will grow is probably maybe you have targeted the high and mighty. You build the school in such a way that you know, you have positioned yourself. And that's why you see the schools like the schools like Corona, Christland, British American University, um, um, uh, British American Secondary School, right? Uh, America, whatever. You know, all those kind of schools. Are doing fantastically well. Sometimes I was talking with somebody. And I said, do you know that the confusion is such that Government does not want the children to fail. And God does not want lies. So which one should we do? I interpreted it from Yoruba. The Yoruba is Olon wo feiro Ijoba wo feiro tito So what do you do? Or how do you explain when as a school VP or a school principal the commissioner of education tells you when admission, when exam is about to happen, that nobody must fail in your school. So what do you do? How many people here parents are teachers or used to be teachers in private in government school? Uh, so you can relate with what I'm saying, I mean, uh, in, in in government school, they tell you that child must not fail. No, a child. That did not come to class. A child that did not even do an exam. So that child, he will not present YEC results. Seven distinctions. 
a soft education. It's not what? Processed education. It's not an education that you sat down reading under midnight candle, putting your leg inside cold bucket of water, chewing cola nuts, bitter cola, orogbo, nescaf. Somebody wake up in the middle of the night, you are dozing off, they give you samba on your head. How many people here did they give samba? Okay. All right. If you don't have anybody giving you samba, <laughs> oh boy, give you samba. Okay. Why are you sleeping? Ah, that time. I just come. Say, okay, you've been on this thing. All right. What is Gay Lusa's law of combining power? <laughs> Paddy? <laughs> Paddy? Gay Lusa's law of combining power. <laughs> I'm a wo. What does Avrogado's law say? You are looking. You are looking at the thing like this. Oh. You are looking, and the thing is, is you are not. So there are some things that are expedient of us as Christians, which is where I'm going to our conduct, and I'll be speaking to five areas. The first one is, and that flyer that we had was what? Discipline. The second one was what? Honor. The third one was what? Service. The fourth one was giving. And the fifth one was what? Lifestyle. Discipline. So can we talk about discipline? Discipline. For discipline, I preached the message sometimes last year. Um, you could always grab that message. Uh, the theme of that message was um, excelling in Babylon. If you remember that message, excelling in Babylon. Where I talked about, um, and I think, I think recently I shared the message with us. I, I'm not sure. I think I shared the message again recently with us. And also... Um, I shared the message also with one message by um, Joshua Selman, right? Where I talked about um, what, was, what did I even talk about? I think it was something about process or something. Um, um, I, I'm trying to remember the title of that message. Something that had to do with structure, system, and all that. Um, something strides or something. I can't remember. But I shared the message recently with us to listen. So for that one about excelling in Babylon, I talked about things like having a resolve. I talked about relationship. I talked about routine. I talked about retreats. How many people remembered when I used those words? You remembered? Okay. Yeah. Routine, relationship, um, um, you know, retreats, right? Uh, resolve. I will share that message again uh, if I can lay my hands on it. Okay. So when we look at discipline, what does it mean to be disciplined? Uh, many of us, we are Christians, we are not disciplined. <laughs> oh my, uh, Kata. You open up your mouth and you talk anyhow. Your mouth can say anything, anywhere, anyhow. And when we look at discipline, discipline is in different fronts. Discipline in words. Discipline in even your feeding, your eating. The Bible says, when thou sittest to sit, when thou sittest with a king or a ruler to eat. Proverbs 23. It says, consider that which is before thee. Verse 4. So, consider that which is before thee. Because deception might be added to it. It's not every food somebody tells you to come and eat. You open up your mouth, you carry a spoon. And some of you, you are not even disciplined. You get to somebody's house. As you get to somebody's house and the person is about to eat, the next thing you are looking for, ah, she been called. Ah, she been called. <laughs> you know, they say, Eba Mire. When they say Eba Mire, you know, uh, uh, that Eba Mire is like, uh, oh boy, God has answered my prayer. <laughs> so, 
Some of you are not even disciplined with your life. Somebody is going somewhere and he, he says, ah, smoke of SI, Debehen, you. Debehen does not have bearing. It's just Debehen. Ah, yeah, by law. <laughs> and you wander away. And because it is Debehen, Debehen does not have a destination. You keep on walking. What kind? Discipline. Tell your neighbor disciplined. How disciplined are you? How disciplined? It's not every conversation you get yourself involved with. It's not every place you go to. It's not everything you eat. So you are not disciplined. They can't even fast. The day there is no fast. 3 p.m. they have not eaten. But the day they are to fast, 12 p.m., 10 a.m., their God is calling them. You know, Paul said some people, their God is their belly. Discipline. What does it mean to be disciplined? To be disciplined means to re regulate your life. To discipline means regulate your life. Some of you, you sleep like no man's business. Kai! The sleep of tomorrow, you have slept it today. As in, they can sleep the sleep of tomorrow, today. They must not hear that there is holiday. Holiday is coming. Holiday is coming. Thank God there's only on Monday and Tuesday. Some of you are preparing to sleep. Kai! Only day, if they don't sleep. If 12 noon has not knocked, they have not wake up. Ah! Proverbs chapter 6. Let's see what Proverbs chapter 6 tells us. Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 4. I think I would want us to read it from the Passion's translation. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 6. No, Proverbs chapter 6, rather. Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 4. From the Passion's translation. I think I would want us to see it from the Passion's. Either Passion's or, or Amplified. I think it's Passion's. They with us, okay, or they are looking for it. Proverbs. If somebody has passions, let me check mine. Passions translation. No, verse um, from verse four. From verse four. Proverbs six from verse four. <laughs> don't put it off what did the King James say uh, can we read this what did he say so it means that there are necessary sleeps and there are unnecessary sleep give not unnecessary sleep guy Daddy Gio said something. He said, doctor said the average sleep for a human is eight hours per day. So eight hours, I think it was last week when they said it. So eight hours per day. That is a quarter of a day. So if he's sleeping a quarter a day in a year, he has slept a quarter of the year. Eh, a quarter, eh, one third. So that's four months, have you? One third, one over three. So that's four months. So he said he has slept four months out of 12 months. And also bear in mind that out of that same eight months that remain, four months out of the remaining eight months too, you can't do anything. Because some people. I, I, I read something about Dangote. He said the reason why he uses his private jets is that most of his business transactions and dealings and his readings happens inside his private jets. He's surrounded by books. 
So you know, it is lazy people that take pictures inside private jets. And what you see is NSC, Mohit, Jack Daniel, uh, and you see some tiny skinned um, babes with legs coming. You know, that's what they show us on TV now. I mean, or is that not what they show us in in a music video? Did I lie? They are, ah, oh. This church, you people are very fake. Oh. They watch this thing. Oh. They watch it. Oh. They watch it. Oh. They watch it. Oh. Eh? At least you watch TV. Eh? Eh? You know. So they watch the thing. So you see them and they. Whereas you would not see where somebody is inside that same private jet and is reading a book, is signing checks. Why? Because we live in a perverse generation. So they will show you things that are perverse. That's why I stopped going to all those aspire to despire to aspire conferences. We went, I went for one sometimes ago in 2015. And this man, you know, gave all the fine story, bubble story and everything. I became a billionaire in two years. Yeah, okay. Oga, how did you do it? Believe in God, be hardworking, have faith. Oga, you are not answering the question. How did you become a billionaire in two years? Tell us, who did you see? Where did you go to? Is it government contract I got? You know, I was listening to, you know, I was listening to a message. I think it was on Friday. I mean, no. Where was I driving to? I was driving somewhere. I was, okay, yeah. I was driving somewhere. I think it was on Wednesday. I was driving somewhere. And Joshua Sama was preaching something. He said, you know, he says we come to church and the pastor will say, by this time next year, that you will, be, you will enter into mag, mega increase, financial overflow, and everybody will shout, Amen! Transgenerational way, everybody will shout, Amen. And he said, but the pastor was not sincere enough to tell you, that come, on. for you to command this kind of money, you need to get government contracts. Because you know, it is only government contracts that transact in billions. That's why bank, eh? the, greatness, the greatest of your revenue in bank, it comes from all those your treasury bill. Uh, what do you call those things? Investment income. Who has those income? Who has those products that you are selling in bank? It's, fe it's who? Federal government. God bless you. That's why. Individual can go can go bankrupt. A government can go bankrupt. Patak, 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 patak. They will tell you, come and collect one more block. So what they needed to tell you is, see, you need to know the CBN governor. You need to know the brother of the APC secretary. I, am I talking to somebody? Eh? See, bros, sister, come. Don't be everything be prayer. You go pray the prayer, Bito. You need the prayer. The prayer one I say so that when you appear before there, they will not say, Where are you coming from? Who sent you? Where are you? Who are you? Who are you? Where from? You need the prayer. So that prayer you will prepare down for you. But the Am I talking to somebody? I'm trying to open your head. I'm trying to open your head. You are a tailor. Let government give you contract to go and sew NYC uniform. You, you, you can't beg again. What are you talking about? You are selling shoe. Let them give. You are even selling tissue paper. Go and supply tissue paper in government house for one year. Oh, God. They, you cannot, you need. That's why even the so called banks and everything, they do business with governments. When COVID came and all the banks were coming out and were saying, We give you one billion, we give you one billion. Okay, don't worry. Oh my year. Why were they giving government one billion? 
They know what they will get back from government. Why didn't they come to your house and knock on your door and say, come, take one billion naira? Because there's nothing you can offer. Tell your neighbor, wake up. In your business proposal, start thinking of, of governments. Include governments in your proposal. Let government give you one road to go and do. Let them give you just one building to go and build. But also pray that it's not the government that will give you work and will not pay you. <laughs> some government have given some people work and has led to their early debts because they borrowed money to go and do the projects. They now change. This is the most dangerous time to even do anything business for government now. <laughs> if the APC does not enter, PDP enter. <laughs> you know what happens? They just cancel everything. What did Jack say? But, you know, I'm just talking to you. So right now, campaigns will be going on and all that. Eh? Go and look for the campaign chairman of some organization. If it is T-shirt, you can do do T-shirt for them. If it's to get cap for them, sell cap for them. If it is to do umbrella for them. If it's to do anchor chief. If it's to supply bottled water for them. Did I just give somebody business idea? Uh, okay, will I take it? Will I leave it? Uh, I did not aspire you to perspire you. May I tell you what to do? Mm -hmm. I did not tell you go and pray. Because some of us, we've been praying, 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 praying. So discipline. So, it was saying, do not sleep unnecessarily. Manage the way you sleep. For God's sake, how can you go to bed 8 p.m. and you are waking up 8 a.m.? You are a failure. Hmm? You are a failure. <laughs> the only way you are authorized or permitted to sleep that kind of way if you are not feeling fine. <laughs> Eh? 12 hours. 8 hours sleep is too much. 8 hours is too much. Discipline. You eat breakfast. You eat. Why don't you even discipline yourself? You know, they said, the children, my mother said, then in those, in the olden days, when they born you, in CAC back then, they would teach you how to fast. You eat by 12 o'clock as a child. But these days, don't you think it's the devil that is catching up with us? The day they tell you to fast by 10 o'clock, one guy is catching you. How many of us here can fast on Christmas Day? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many of you can fast on your birthdays? Nama. Nama. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. Christmas Day. The Christmas is not Christmas. When there is Christmas, they are frying chicken. People are eating your fronts. There is fried rice. There is salad. Everything. You look at it now. You ask God, God, why me? Oh, oh boy. I remember I had one Christmas day like that. And God said, Bros, you are fasting. And I was going on a three days fast. Straight fast. <laughs> oh boy. You know what I did? As they started frying the Orishi Rishi, I just stepped out of the house. I went for prayer walk. You know where I went walk from? I trekked from the house to Meron bus stop, back to the house to pray. By the time I got home, I just went to go and find the bed. Come to thee, O Lord. Do I lift up my soul? I slept off. Daddy Joe said the way he learned it 
that Gio loves beans. I don't know if anybody has heard of that Gio's um, talking about that fasting. He said he loved beans so much that at that time, when they put beans down, it will break the fast. So he said, what he started doing was when the wife starts cooking beans, he will carry himself and lock himself up in the office. When she's done, they have eaten finish. He knows that they will have finished the food. He now comes back to the house. Tell neighbor, be disciplined. All right. Daniel in verse Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. And Daniel proposed in his heart, you must be disciplined. That's why the scripture we read, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, tells us how we should conduct ourselves. The second one I want to talk about is honor. Say honor. This one is a heavy something. Malachi chapter 1, 6 to 8. Malachi chapter 1, 6 to 8. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? See the Lord of hosts unto you. O priests, those people are having another administration. Tell them they are not following. Tell them they are having another administration eh? that they need to follow. Eh? Ministration. Where is my fear? Say the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? If you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto the governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person? Say the Lord of hosts. Praise the living Jesus. Amen. Honor. What is honor? Honor simply means to regard. Honor is to regard. Honor is not man worship. Honor is not man worship. Honor is not you being a man pleaser. Honor is to regard. You regard people for who they are. You regard people for what they represent. You regard people for what they do. So you regard people for who they are. You regard people for what they represent. And you regard people for what they do. Praise the living Jesus. And the first promise in the Bible, or the first instruction in the Bible with a promise, was centered around honor. Exodus 20, 12. Honor your father and your mother, that it shall be well with you, and your days shall be long upon the earth. You know, we have a generation that lives just for ourselves and by ourselves alone. And that's why I told you that a Christian is someone who has been called into a life of what? A selfless life, right? And what? A Godful life. John said that I may reduce that he might what? Increase. We live for ourselves, for ourselves alone, full of ourselves. Men who are full of themselves can never regard anybody. They can never regard <laughs> anybody. And it's a dangerous place to be in. Honor. Oh, I will start with honor for your parents. How do you honor your parents? Many of us, 
We don't even help our parents do things. Very simple things. You don't wait until it's their birthday. I always say to every, every time in this church, send recharge cards to your father. Send recharge cards to your mother. If your father sees recharge card, he would use that same recharge card to call you back and say what? God bless you. You know, the problem we have is that we are looking for one man of God to say a word of prayer over us. Forgetting that the person who brought you into this world, his voice is even stronger than the voice of a pastor. If you have watched Covenant Church, you would know that it's you. The person that spoke a prophecy in his life was his mother. He says, when you call one, nations will answer you. So it was not it was not any pastor that prayed over him. Some of you are looking for an apostle to come and lay hands on you, see something on you. Pray for your parents. How do you honor them? You pray for them. You show concern for them. You assist them do things. It is wrong. You see your father carrying a bucket of water and you walk past him. And you are strewing with him. You are, you, are, you are a foolish son. Am I talking to some people? Your father is carrying buckets. It's you um, walk straight by his side. Your mother wants to do Amala. You will now cross leg and let the woman do the Amala for you when you are there. Oh no. You pray for them. You celebrate them. Oh no. It's part of the Christian culture. It's required in our conduct. Act of Apostles chapter 3. No, 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 sorry. Act of Apostles chapter 4. No, yeah, chapter, three, um, chapter 2 rather. Ah, Apostles chapter 2. The scripture told us that everybody were bringing all of their goods into the church, selling and using it. Why? Because they honored people. They honored themselves. So I've talked about honor to your father and to your mother. Honor your siblings. Honor your spouses. Honor your friends. Regard them. Don't say spiteful things about them. Unfortunately, the human mind is configured to identify evil more and see good less. So you don't celebrate. And you know, God was saying, can you bring a sick animal and give it to your governor as salaram or a blind cow and say, oh, this cow is big, oh, but it is blind. And the leg has cut away. Will he take it? That's what some of us do. Honor. Honor is not about high service. See, here it is. Honor is not high service. Honor is simply means regard. Regard. And honor is not... Some of you, you don't even honor your, your, sub, your, your guards at work. And it's also two-way thing. Or God to honor the people you lead. Oga, don't talk any out to Omoshe. Omoshe, don't talk any out to what? Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that. It says, Fathers, it says, Honor your father and your mother in the Lord. And it says, And do not provoke your sons unto what? Unto anger. But even if they provoke you to anger, at least your MD, they provoke you. 
you know vex, resign. Because you know Shapa go visit you. They talk to you like any other. They piece, like piece of bread. After they finish, do you understand? Yes, sir. Well, your father talk to you. And you look at your father. Tell us all. You tell your father, Koshi Kuru. Kai! The scripture says, anybody that tells his father, fool, he says, his light will put out. Many people have missed out opportunities in life because of what they've done to their parents. And not only just their parents, even spiritual parents. Be very careful what you say. Be very careful. You know, especially for us in church settings. It's always very easy to gang up and say, ah, that HOD is rubbish. That pastor is nonsense. That whatever. Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, are you the one that appointed him? Ah, uh, Okay. Except you have not read. Romans chapter 8, 33. It says, Who shall lay a claim against God's elect? Ah. So, leave him and God. But you, you want to be the galaxy of the universe. I mean, what do they call that thing? Something of the universe. That's. Eh? Something of the universe. That all those uh, Marvel, Marvel series. Uh -huh. Guardian of the what? Uh -huh. Okay, you want to be guardian of the galaxy. You take Ugbe, Ugbe sorry. Be careful. Honor. And you honor by giving. By showing regard. You know, when you will not be available for something, it is honor to call in advance to say, I am sorry, I will not be available. It's honor. I will come late from work. It's honor to send text message to your father, to your mother, to your wife, to your sibling, whoever you are staying with, that I may come late today. It's honor. So that that person would not begin to wonder. Maybe they've carried you away. Or maybe there's one chance, boss. It's honor. It's not that when I come is when I come. You know, some of us, when I come, is when I come. What's it day? What's it day? Honor. Tell your neighbor honor. honor. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10. Also tells us, honor God with your substance. Regard. I want to tell you some. I want to tell you a story about honor. You know. And something you need to know about honor is that when you honor, I'll tell you two stories. When I got to the university, I went to a university that I did not want to go to, <laughs> but I went to that university by prophecy, because prophecy preceded. <laughs> And um, because I had admission to Unilag Merit. Those were the years when they used to put names inside newspaper. You know, if you remember back then, they used to, they, they were admitted, everybody that they admitted to Unilag. And you know, the way they always put the admission, they will put the first space, they will put merits. They will now on, uh, at least, on all those things. They will go on that line. Merit. I had merit. I had admission to Covenant University. But there was this university that was saying, come on, come over here to Macedonia. <laughs> and I didn't want to go. <laughs> the journey was like a forever journey. So I went. And the very day I got there, as I stepped my foot upon the, ch the floor, and God showed me, I was walking past, and he said, this is your church, that you'll be a pastor in this church. And I was like, what kind of drama will you say? Like, you know, that time, a very young guy now, I was very young now, very young. So, which one is 
you land your leg in school. You are still even fighting that this school, I don't even want to come to this school in the first instance. You are hearing something. You are not even sure what the thing is. That time, the only thing you had was, the only thing we know how to do was, ba 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 You know, I told you now, ba 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 For those who came early, ba 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 And then, that's your church. I did not go to that church for one year, for almost two years. I started attending that church, second semester, 200 level. Now, but that's not what I'm going to. So in my first year, they had the opportunity to do one program. And when they had that program, I went, and coincidentally, the president of that church, who also was like the JCCF pastor at that time, was having his birthday. And you know, in university days, at least, Toby can tell you, the way, I, I don't know maybe it has dropped in your time, but in our time, as president, as papa, if you know what they call papa, ah, Jesus of glory, do you know what they call papa? Pastor Paul, eh, pastor, you know papa? Papa. When you are papa, you are papa indeed. Ah, as a student papa, I know they cook food, though. I can tell you, no, I don't want to eat this one today. Give me that one tomorrow. You know, I know they, ch- I know they chop soup of two days, though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, Papa, then, you are working, Papa. Cadet, the CCO or Papa, will come and my father in the Lord. <laughs> uh, don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. They want to do you, 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 SUG election. Who is the SUG person now? They will not come and see Papa. <laughs> you don't come and see Papa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you don't come and see Papa. Papa. <laughs> so, you know, that was, I mean, that was how, I don't know if, was that the way he's still in school? It has, uh, <laughs> eh? <laughs> uh-huh. No, I'm serious. So that was the way. That's that's the way it was. When, so I gave. So you know, I heard that this man was doing his birthday. I'm a member of the church, and then my mom got me a very fine shirt from Turkey. I had not worn that shirt at all, and the spirit of the Lord told me to go and give it to him. Ah, I said, which one is this one? I'm not a member of this church. Um, this, you said I should go and give him shit. I shall have struggled. I shall have went there that day, like two days later. I went to greet him. I said, sir, um, my name is Benga. Um, I'm an 100-level student of electrical electronics. Um, uh, I just, the Lord told me to give you this shit for your birthday. And the guy prayed for me. He said, the Lord will honor you. The Lord will leave you. Alone. Blah, 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 blah. I, did not think, I was not a member of his church. Oh. Yet he gave me that. You know, I gave him that gift. And he prayed for me. In 200 level second semester, I now joined the church. I now ended up becoming pres- how I became president. Because that church, how me, I joined the church in 200 level second semester. I joined Walker in 300 level. By 400 level, they made me a school. In a church of over 1,700 people. Even I heard that some people, they dropped them away from Esco ship because they said God said, God told them that they are the presidents. Even me that God told that you are the president. I did not open my mouth and say, God said you are the president. But you know, the big guys were spirit filled. They said, Benga, what is it? I said nothing. I said, Benga, will you shut up? Tell me what God told you. They bullied me into telling them what. You know, God, God can actually tell you what I've told you. I said, tell me. Ah, I now started with story. I said, well, so that this does not look presumptuous. The very day I stepped my foot in this school, this was the f- what God told me. On this day, certain day, sometimes you need to write down what God told you. On this day and this day, God showed me this vision. I saw myself standing on this place and I was preaching and I saw people and I did not understand. And God again told me and he said, Minga, thank you, bye-bye. So when it was the day to call presidents, you know, they will call everybody. 
they were power, mighty, you know, mighty men of valor, you know, that were there. Those ones, by the time they were calling all of those things, they did not call those ones for anything. Ah, so I had already zeroed my mind. I said, Mika, you know, you are a stupid boy. You already said you are president. You gave your senior storytelling. <laughs> nah. They push you aside. They called Brother Scott. They did not call those guys. They called um, Jensek. They did not call them. Ah, I said, we said they. I said, we said they. <laughs> I said, is either or one thing? He said, either this person is the person or. I said, me, if I'm not the person, glory be. I don't want to do. By the time they called my name, say, I wanted to run away. But where am I going to? Apart from the fact that there were words spoken. Apart from the vision, I also did what? I honored a grace. And that president is a president that I've stayed ever close to till date. It was president in 2004, 2003, 2004. And it's a president I still, he still chatted me yesterday night. During Corona COVID time, I brought him to talk to us on um, WhatsApp, Pastor Dick Makmanishile. That's the person. Honor. I will share another example with you. Honor. I said, Honor is regard. And I will use somebody as an example in this church. There is someone that you might not see him around. But when he talks about honor, he understands the subject of honor. That's um, um, uh, what's his name? Tony, keyboardist. You know, this guy. One day, all throughout that COVID period, he would always report in my house. All the services we would do together. Sometimes he will call me and he will say, Pastor, when I was praying for you, and I will be like, You are praying for me? You know, I said, Sort of our honor, you give them gifts, you give them prayer. So you honor, you give. Many of us, we don't honor. The danger of this is that somebody read, read, wrote something one day. He said, many of us, we honor celebrity pastors. We would rather put Daddy Gio on our status. We would rather put Apostle Joshua Selman on our status. You will not put your local assembly pastor on your status to say, Pastor, God bless you, sir. So you won't pray. We will lead prayer. We will not remember to pray for the pastor that is shepherding over you. Somebody, I think when recently when AJS did his birthday and everybody were flooding everything and this thing, this thing, and somebody did not put any status on his, on his phone. And somebody accused them, and you did not put this on your phone. Ah, is it my father? I have not put my own pastor. Uh, uh, that because she did not put that girl is not born again. It was that bad. It was that bad. Because there is so I'm going somewhere. This guy was before I started no work. Giving himself to the things of God, supporting the work we do in church. Then on this day, you know, I would even sit down, tell him, okay, you do this, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah, hey, take this and all. Then, you know, he got a job that takes him around, not always around. And when I have, he would tell me, Pastor, I'm not in Lagos now. I'm just about leaving Kuala. 9 p.m. in the night. So I can meet him to church the next morning. I'll say, oh God, 
please don't come. We say, ah, no, Pastor, no, no, there's a problem. There's no problem. Ah, no, if I don't come now, how will the service go? How will some of us, if we don't show, we are not even bothered how the service will go. Ah. I'll tell him. No. I said, don't bro, don't worry. You know, Kule Ajayi said something. Kule Ajayi, you hardly see Kule Ajayi on invitation flyers or program. He said something. He said, see, I will come and minister your program, but I don't want to disappoint you. If I'm about to climb the altar and that the geo calls me and say, Kunle, where are you? He said, I'm sorry to disappoint you. I will not play. I will run back. That's why you can't see his face on flyers. He will just come, play. And that's what today does. There was a particular day. He was supposed to leave from um, Ijebu to Kuala. And I was waiting for administration somewhere. He said, no, that he will come. That after he comes, he will go to Kuala. I said, no, it's stressful for you. you no, no, because if you know me, I can be very reasonable. I don't put pressure on you to kill yourself, to do anything for God. He said, no, he will come. He came. And on this day, as I was getting, you know what? He was supposed to even catch up with me somewhere. He ended up coming late. I stood and they were already calling me and I was traveling to where I was going. Because it was, a, it was a long distance away. And I just left. You guess what? He came to come and meet me at the venue on Okada. I said, ah. I was like, I already said don't come. And I don't want to stress you. That day, not on one occasion, not on two occasions, as I go minister and they give me honorarium, sometimes they give me some very fat envelope. And the Holy Ghost will tell me, I don't take anything and give everything to you. I'll, yeah, you cannot. The Holy Ghost will tell me, the envelope with you, as they give it to me, oh, God bless you. It is well with you in Jesus' name. I'll just give it to him. Take. God said I should give it to you. The last VG we had, it was supposed, it was coming from Oshun that night. And his phone fell down. He even got to church before me. His phone fell down. Ah, and it was like, God, how will I do this for? By the time I got to church and I said, I said, I thought you are not coming for VG. You are not sure now. How do you want to do it? Do you want to go back again and all that? That, that would be stressful for you. Ah, I said, no, Pastor, that, no, no. I said, but I've been trying your number. He said, the phone fell down and Moto crashed the phone and all that. Moto stepped on the phone. Ah, I said, it is well with you. That God, because I was already scared. Because calling, you know, the last thing was, I'm coming. So calling, number was not going. And I saw him in church. I was happy. So after we were done, he went, followed me to the house to go and rest. Me, I did not rest. Took off, and I went to camp because I had some other administrations in camp. And I also had a day out with Gio on camp. By the time it was Saturday evening, he sent me a message. He said, Pastor, as I got back to work, my yoga gave me a brand new phone. What am I saying? Which is leading me to the next place. Honor. You cannot honor and not serve. Honor compels service. Honor compels service. When you honor, you serve. 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 The Bible said concerning Elisha, the one that pours water on the hands of 
Elijah. What does it mean to pour water? To pour water is not just saying you are pouring water. To pour water actually means to serve. Don't be too big to serve God. And don't be too big to serve the man of God. Don't be too big to serve God. Don't be too big to serve the man of God. A man of God, don't be too big to equate yourself as God. Because you know, many men of God, what they like is, <laughs> ah, my son, God bless you. My son, God. <laughs> Recently something happened, you know, one of my friends. He came. I said, ah, see, ah. Ah, he, he, he said, ah, he, he just hit me like this. Ah, you, ah, you just left me alone. I, I said, who's left you alone? I brought out my phone and I showed him. I said, see, you must be a joker. I called you, see, timestamp. I called you two times. Eh? Sa Saturday. Did you pick? Did you pick? He said, ah, okay, no problem. Well, I, at least this is vindicated that there is call stamp here. I went away. So I was now sharing with one of my friends. Oh, he said that one. He said he has left him alone. That he does not even... Because sometimes it gets to a point where it gets into your head. If God brings you into a position and you become up, some people, they were nothing. And they just give them one small position. And to pick call becomes problematic. Ah, the day an opportunity for your rising will come, they will not be, they will not call you. Because what? That position has gotten into your score. Has gotten into your brain. You know, we find it. I have a lot of friends, you know, that roll with um, I am mighty people. All that. And I know where to draw the line with them. Because if you check out Many people are around great men of God. There is nothing great about their life. <laughs> they are there for the glam. Oh, we know him. Stay back. And know God for yourself. So service. Serve God. Because the Bible says to us in the book of Hebrews chapter 6, it says, God will not forget your labor of love. So serve. I have not called the house of Jacob to serve in vain. You cannot be in the church of God and be a... You, if you are a believer who is also a Christian and you are all you do to church is come on church or every Sunday and you don't do anything. Kai! Your salvation is questionable. Kai! Can't you even imagine? Have you asked the question, who cleaned the chair I'm sitting down on? Who swept the church, the floor, the church I came into? Service. <laughs> we had a VG here. And um, the word of God came out and said God was changing genotypes. Right? And um, we want to pray. Come out. To come and check your genotype. Um, you know, to pray for you. For genotype. And some people came out and we prayed for them. It was not the prayer of Pastor Benga that worked. What God told me, he said, there is a reward for service. That person that came to give testimony that the genotype changed after that vigil from AS to AA. A guest to church as early as 6.30 a.m. in the morning to come and clean the church. So do you think there is a God that will not reward service? Many of us, we are executive Christians. Executive Christians. Executive. You know what executive does? They come in when everything is set. <laughs> in case you don't know, I'm always the last person to leave church. Ha. In case you don't know. Sometimes... I will gather the chairs. I read the chairs myself. In case you don't know. Start picking Lilo. <laughs> yes. 
that the geo said the hand that cannot do manual labor cannot do cannot do the supernatural uh, so why why am i too big as a pastor to sweep floor uh, don't i sweep the floor in my house <laughs> ask my wife <laughs> if i sweep floor for you eh? <laughs> no. you can't you can't come and shakara me that you are sweeping floor she sh floor of all things floor if I sweep floor and mop floor for you, oh God. Service. Please go and study. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 10, where is workmanship created unto every good works? Hebrews 6 10, 1 Peter 4 10, 1 Peter 4 10, Acts of Apostles chapter 20, verse 19, Acts of Apostles 20, verse 19. John chapter 9 verse 4. John chapter 9 verse 4. I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Serve God. You are not saved to be a bench warmer. One of the ways you can serve God is also evangelize. Okay? Many of us don't even tell people any God that we don't tell, we don't tell people anything about God. Come to church, so let's do evangelism. We don't see you. come as executive. God does not bless executive members. So. God blesses executing members. There's a difference. Executive and executing. What's the difference? Executing is the person who is involved. Executive is the one who is a shaman. May I never be a shaman before God. The last one is giving, giving, giving. Give your substance unto God. Give unto God. I try to dodge away from all this giving, giving, giving. Because, you know, sometimes it's always very easy for people to say, ah, no, the pastor wants them to come and give him money. Yes, okay, it's good. Give pastor money. You want to give pastor money, bring the money. I'm collecting USD. In case you don't know. It's now 615 naira. Right? Uh -huh. So give USD. But God expects us as believers, as Christians, to give. David said in Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 24, and also First Chronicles 21, 24, I will not give that which will not cost me. Ah! I had a testimony, and that thing provoked me. Giving. That the Jew was sharing a testimony with us during the less, um, you know, um, what's that thing called? They are with you in June. And he said, a young man came to him and said, Daddy, I want to sponsor the convention, the Congress. And he looked at him and he said, a young man, do you know what it takes to sponsor Congress? Like Congress where they give. How many people have eaten the meats that they serve in Congress before? How heavy is those meats? The meats are always, you always make sense, have you? Uh -huh. Like, do you know what it means to like support Congress? He said, Daddy, I will do it. Okay. Daddy said, let's see. This was some years ago. Daddy said, okay, let's see. To see that you are serious. Well, you need a minimum of about 1 billion naira to sponsor Congress. The man wrote a check of 300, 000, 300 million naira. Went, dropped it. He said, Daddy, I'm coming back. Went back, borrowed, went to a bank, borrowed 300 million naira brought it. This is the balance of what I want to give. 600. Daddy said, after some years later, the bank where he borrowed the 300 million naira from, he ended up becoming the chairman of the bank. <laughs> That's number one. Number two, the man later owned owns private jets, about three. And he now told him, he said, Daddy, 
It is an insult for my mommy to want to fly anywhere. And she's joining Q. That once my mommy, because there are times daddy has to be in one country, mommy has to be in another country. Once my mommy wants to travel anywhere, he said, let me know. The man flies mommy Jew. Anywhere she wants to go to. By giving. You know, see, giving is beyond tithe and offering. <laughs> Some people are fighting you. They are saying pay tithes is Old Testament doctrine. Okay. It's New Testament uh, fight. Okay. Don't worry. If you like, whichever one. But some people, they've even gone ahead. In the New Testament, if we want to do it the New Testament way, do you know what they give? They give 100%. Uh, Pastor, are you a scam? No, it's in the Bible. Act of Apostles chapter 2. They sold everything and they brought it to the apostles' feet. And they said, take home. And somebody that even did appropriation, let's keep 50. You owe 50. They died. So if 10% is what you are fighting for, New Testament is asking for what? 100%. And that's why, but Paul had to put it in a very diplomatic way. You know the reason? Because Paul was diplomatic than Peter. You know why? Why? All right. Yeah, you got the answer I was looking for. It's not necessarily money, but you, you understand where I'm going. Peter was a fisherman. Peter was fisherman. Peter no go school. That's why the scripture told us that in Acts of Apostles chapter 3, that they marveled that, Kai! These guys, no go school. Ah! No be that guy for Isaleko, for that place, for that river. How far this guy just, they talk anyhow, and then people just, they follow the anointing. They, you know, they were, they, were, they were shocked. They said, and when they took knowledge, that these guys were unlearned men, but they said, but they had been with what? Jesus. But Paul was different. Paul was a scholar. Was a professor of the law. So he had a more systematic way. He now said, you know what? Um, so he that sows sparingly eh, will rebound sparingly. But he that sows bountiful. How does bountiful mean? Bountiful means yeah, uh -huh. you know, when you buy rice, derika. Eh? And you want the rice to be bountiful. You know, put jarasi, the thing will top, you know. Understand? So Peter, Paul was the one that was able to explain it. So if you are waiting for 10%, okay, yes. A guy came recently and, and said, cry for dollar. And said, all his, uh, whatever, teaching about. Uh, we don't even need to address any teaching. Don't need to come and confuse people. Just tell them the Coco that, okay, oh, I, God wants you to be blessed. And God desires that. There is no way you can be blessed as a Christian when you don't give. And your giving must be to God. Your giving must be to people of God. Your giving must also be to the less privileged. So you give to God. You give to men of God. And you give to less privilege. You know, a guy called Freeze Them Out said that leave the man of God out. Leave God out. And focus on less privilege. But that equation is not balanced. You must give to God. Give to the man of God. And give what? To the less privilege. And the last one is lifestyle. How do you conduct yourself? When they look at you, can they actually say, ah, no, 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 this guy is a pastor. <laughs> you know, I was shocked. Something happened. I think um, two days ago, I was trying to fix the gen. No, I think it was on Friday. Yes, on Friday, I was trying to fix the gen. Uh, yeah, it was two days ago. I was trying to fix the gen. And I came down. And some guys that I don't even relate with, I don't even, they just came into my compound. They came to use my, my um toilet to wee. And then, oh, 
And I just greeted them. You know, ah, they said, ah, you know, where they were, they said, ah, and then um, by the time they turned back and they saw me, ah, ah, Pastor, hey, ah, Pastor, uh, I was shocked. Because you know why? I have never even had any interaction, conversation with them. When people see you, what comes to their mind? Are you a Dagbodu somebody? Or you, are you a very troublesome person? Are you a controversial person? Your lifestyle, your lifestyle must preach God. Praise the living Jesus. How do you conduct yourself? Are you a noisemaker? Your lifestyle. Are you somebody that is always going about borrowing something from somebody and say, I'll give you back? I never return. Ah, yes, I you know, you know, we have those friends now that uh, when they come into our house, we're gonna keep those those shoes. They will borrow your wristwatch. Yes, sorry. Face cap. Yeah, we are fine. We just say, just say, debe. No, it's always debe that always cause the problem. Debe. They don't. They never return it. And so what happens? You begin to keep those things. Are you somebody that says, "Okay, I'm coming, and I'm coming is that kingdom come." Your lifestyle. The kind of words you say. The kind of places you find yourself in. If you are somebody that what appeals to you is where the name of the Lord is not glorified, then you are not a believer. You are not a Christian. Praise the living Jesus. Can we bow down our heads this morning? And say to God, Lord, I indeed want to be a Christian. And so, Lord, help me. I want to be a believer. He says, be thou an example of a believer in conversation, in my conduct, in speech, in my words, in faith, in spirit and in love. I want you to know that if you don't love, you can't honor. If you don't love, you can't give. For God so loved the Lord that he gave. If you don't love, you can't serve. <laughs> That's why he calls it your labor of love. If you don't love, you can't be disciplined. That's why Jesus Christ could do the will of God. If you don't love, you can't stay in the place and God's assignment. So why don't you pray? Lord, please help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. For adventure, there are ways and areas of your life Where you need some adjustments. Why don't you ask God for help? Some of us, maybe the way we talk. Some of us, we are not disciplined. We can't even fast. Some of us, maybe we don't even honor our parents. You know, we are fighting with our father. Or, you know, maybe our father has done something wrong to us. Yes, there are times that your parents can actually, you know, can sincerely wrong you. <laughs> we have parents that, rather than speaking a blessing, they speak curse over their children. And that has, you know, has shattered you. But I want you to know that it's a strategy of the devil to deprive you from experiencing the best of God for your life. So why don't you ask God for mercy, for strength to overcome? And I want us to pray, especially in the place of giving. If you have not been praying for your church, 
You've not been given your substance. You've not been given your ideas. You've not been given your supports. To your local assembly. That is to this church. That God would help you. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, follow peace with all men. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men. Philippians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, Colossians 4, verse 6, it says, let your words be seasoned. Why don't you also pray, Lord God, please help my vo vo voice. Let my voice be seasoned in the name of Jesus. Lord, make me a better person. Make me a better Christian. Make me a better believer. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God say, and the people of God say, Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. All right. Quickly, let's do the announcements. Announcements. Yeah, what announcement is going on? Can we just pass the offering basket? Announcement. Uh, please, can you help me with the flyer for the VG, the Zona VG? Let's pray on our offering. Okay, let's just project the offerings first. Let's project the offering. Let's project the offering, the accounts. Let's give our offering to the Lord. We've learned about giving. We've learned about giving and also giving honorably. Giving honorably. Giving, trusting God with your finance. All right, so let's give bountifully this morning. If you are making a transfer, let us raise our phones. Or if you have made a transfer of your offerings or your tithes, or you paid in the course of the week, or you're about to give your offering, let's raise them up. Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, can we do better? Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your mercy and the ability to be able to give. Thank you for blessing us. Be thou glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, as we give or as we have given, Lord, increase us in every front. Amen. Let it be well with us. Amen. Prosper all that concerns us Amen. and let Jesus be glorified. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Of um, flyer for VG Zona VG Zona VG by the special grace of God we'll be having. Okay. <coughs> by the special grace of God, <coughs> we'll be having a Zona VG. Uh, sorry, can they hear the flyer? We'll be having a Zona VG coming up on the, the last Friday. Yes, the last Friday of this His month at our Zona headquarters. And the theme of the VG is destined for exploits. Destined for exploits. Um, it's a VG at our Zona headquarters. We have our, um, our provincial pastor who will be ministering. We have our Zona pastor who will be ministering. We also have um, other pastors. Um, myself, Pastor Shil, Pastor Emmanuel, Pastor Femi. Um, would all be ministering and it promises to be a great time of um, of this thing. I, I think God is deliberate about this month being a month of greatness and exploit for us. You know, we started with our Father in the Lord um, on, on Thanksgiving, right? Uh, made for the top. And the funny thing is that this team, <laughs> we even got this team before uh, our father in not preached on Sunday or anything. This team was a team that um, God gave us about three months ago when we we're supposed to have. You know, when Zona Pastor said, I should go and find team. And um, 
and I sent this thing to him and he approved it. So when I saw that first, the Sunday was talking about for the top exploits, we came on Wednesday too, right? Wednesday too was um, something around enlarge my greatness, right? And we have this destined for exploits. I have no doubts in my heart that in this new month, the Lord would indeed do something great in your lives in the name of Jesus. So please, further information will be communicated um, regarding, regarding that. Uh, did I miss any other thing? Before first time, any other information? Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. So by the special grace of God, yeah, uh, we are planning of something having um, a singles hangouts, you know, in church. Ah, we are not happy. We are not happy. It's an opportunity to, to mingle, right?